Watching Wallace by Sharon Hambrick, illustrated by Mary Ann Lum. The Agreement Timothy jumped when Mr. Parker slapped him on the back. Not that Timothy was a scaredy cat, nothing like that. It was just that sometimes, if something jumped out at him, or if someone shouted suddenly, he would jump. So, Tim, my boy, Mr. Parker's voice boomed in the late September afternoon. What about it? What about watching Wallace for me while I'm gone? Timothy concentrated on breathing normally so Mr. Parker wouldn't know how startled he'd been. Okay, Timothy said. He hoped Mr. Parker wouldn't notice how his voice shook. Then it's settled, Mr. Parker said. I'll leave Monday morning, and I should be back Saturday afternoon. Timothy nodded. Mr. Parker slapped him on the back again and tromped off to his house next door. He turned and shouted, Ten bucks, Timmy! I'll give you ten bucks for it! Ten dollars? What for? A deep voice beside Timothy said. Timothy looked up into his dad's kind face. I told him I'd watch Wallace, Dad, Timothy said, not hiding the shakiness in his voice now. For a whole week. Oh, said Dad. You okay about this? No, said Timothy. Timothy lay in his bed that night, wishing he hadn't agreed to watch Wallace. Wallace was a huge mongrel dog, whose tongue hung out slobbering. He never walked anywhere. He bounded. He didn't run. He galloped. He jumped. He barked. I will both Lay me down in peace and sleep, Timothy thought, remembering a Bible verse his mother had taught him long ago. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. It didn't work. The more Timothy thought about Wallace, the more he could not sleep. He lay thinking about that other time, before, when he was seven. Timothy had been walking home from school. He was in second grade then, and his mind was full of second grade thoughts, like adding two-digit numbers, writing in cursive, and playing first base for the city team. Timothy stopped at the edge of the empty field. Mom had told him to come home as fast as he could that day, but the field looked so inviting. He just had to crawl under the fence where it was loose. His backpack snagged for a minute on the metal chain links, but he managed to get it loose. Then it was just Timothy and the field and an open expanse of grass and weeds and dirt. Timothy didn't see the dog until it had knocked him down and was standing over him, teeth barred and a deep growl in its throat. Get off, Timothy screamed. Help! He struggled to free himself. Timothy pulled on his backpack and the dog, a huge beast, just like Wallace, opened its powerful jaws and bit deep into Timothy's leg. Timothy screamed, struggled to his feet, and ran home, limping and sobbing. Even now, two years later, he remembered his mother's frightened face as she washed off his leg and the white coat of the doctor who put on the stitches. 
They had to catch the dog and watch it for two weeks to see if it had rabies. When Timothy heard the word rabies, he shuddered. Even back in second grade, he knew that people didn't always recover from being bitten by a dog that had rabies. Timothy didn't want to die when he was seven. And he didn't want to die now. His door opened. Mom came in and sat on his bed. She stroked his hair and kissed him. It's very brave of you, she said. I'm scared. What if he bites me? Remember Psalm 56, verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. That means that any time you are fearful, you can trust God to help you through the difficult situation. Wallace has had all his shots, Tim, Mom said, and he's a good dog. You won't be in any danger. I know. Mom prayed with him and sang him a song. Even though he was almost ten years old, he liked it when Mom came in and sang. It was comforting at the end of the day. I know how you feel, Mom said. You do? Yes. Mom's voice got quiet. Once, she said, when I was about your age, I went to a fair with my family. My sister and I got in a ride that spins around flat and then goes up steeper and steeper until you're spinning around suspended from the earth. We were at the very top of the ride with our backs toward the ground when the ride stopped. It was stuck. There I was, 30 feet off the ground, holding on to the handrail with hands that got sweatier and sweatier. I was sure I was going to slip out of the car and fall to the ground. We hung there for what seemed like hours. It was the most frightened I've ever been in my life. Is that why you don't go on roller coasters now? That's why. I know they're safe, but they terrify me. Like me and Wallace? Tell you what, Tim, Mom said. She took a deep breath. You watch Wallace for the week, trusting God to take care of you, and I will go on the biggest, twistiest roller coaster you can find. Wow! Timothy knew how frightened his mom was of roller coasters. Every year at the county fair, she'd wait sipping a soft drink while he and Dad stood in line for the Loop the Loop rides and the huge metal roller coasters that twisted back on themselves like snakes. Often he'd said, Come on, Mom, it's fun, and seen her shake her head no. But now she had promised. If Timothy would overcome his fear of caring for Wallace, Mom would ride the tingling terror at the county fair with him this year. Taking Charge Mr. Parker left Monday morning. Monday after school, Timothy did his homework, ate dinner, brushed his teeth. Don't you think it's about time to feed that dog, son? Dad's voice broke through his thoughts. Yes, sir, Timothy said. He got Mr. Parker's key off the key rack and shoved his hands into his pockets. He looked at the floor. Will you go with me, Dad? Timothy scooped out Wallace's dog food and poured clean water into his water dish. Mr. Parker said Wallace likes to be played with, Dad said. Timothy reached out and touched Wallace's coat. 
It was soft and deep. When Wallace turned his head suddenly, Timothy pulled his hand away. Try again, Tim, Dad said. Timothy petted the top of Wallace's head and scratched his neck. He ran his hands through his thick coat. On Tuesday, Timothy asked, Dad, will you go with me again? Go alone, son, Dad said. You can do it. Timothy shuffled to Mr. Parker's house, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. He thought back over the Bible lesson he would heard in Sunday school this week. He thought about how Jesus had stood up in the boat and had sailed to the wind and the waves. Had said to the wind and the waves, Peace, be still. Lord, Timothy prayed, Make the wind and waves inside me be still. Timothy's heart pounded as he turned the key in the lock. He opened the door. Wallace, he called. Out of nowhere, Wallace bounded, barking. He knocked Timothy over. Timothy's heart beat with fear. Wallace stood over him, slobbering wet drool onto his face. Jesus, Timothy whispered, calm my heart. Help me to not be afraid. Wallace lowered his massive head right over Timothy's and licked. Yuck, you old ugly dog, Timothy said laughing. He struggled up and still shaking, scooped out Wallace's food and freshened his water. Good job, son, Dad's voice startled him. Dad? I came behind you, he said, to make sure you were okay. You were here the whole time? Yep. Thanks, Dad. I was afraid. It's okay, son. On Wednesday, Timothy told Dad he would go alone. I've prayed for a peaceful heart. Mom stood behind Dad. I'm not so sure I like this brave son thing, she said. Timothy smiled. He knew Mom was getting worried that she'd have to ride the tingling terror at the county fair. He smiled at Mom as he grabbed the key and headed out the door. That day, he watched Wallace play in the backyard. Dad watched over the fence. On Thursday, Dad didn't watch anymore. Are you afraid of Wallace anymore, Timmy? Mom asked at dinner Thursday night. No, he said. Wallace is great. I took my frisbee today and played catch with him. We had fun. Timothy dug into his mashed potatoes like a plow and shoveled a great load into his mouth. Do you think Mr. Parker would mind if I walk Wallace around the block today? Timothy asked on Friday. The leash is hanging up in the pantry where he keeps the dog food. Why not? Dad said. Timothy hooked the leash to Wallace's collar and opened the door. In a bound, Wallace was off, tearing off down the sidewalk. Timothy held on to the leash for dear life. Wallace, slow down! Timothy called, trying to keep up. His hands hurt as he held tight. Still, the big dog raced, Timothy stumbling after him. He headed for the big fence. Stop! Wallace, stop! Timothy pleaded, but it was no use. Wallace tore the leash out of Timothy's hand and scooted under the fence that surrounded the empty field. Timothy stood on the other side of the fence, shaking. I can't go in there, he thought. He'll bite me. He ran his hand down his leg where he knew the scar was. He looked at the fence. He looked at Wallace. Help me, dear Lord. Help me get 
the dog back. Slowly, Timothy lifted the loose part of the fence. He crouched down and slid his body beneath the chain links. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee, he said aloud. Come here, boy, he said. Come here, Wallace. Wallace ran wildly over the field. Timothy watched, feeling helpless. Wallace trotted toward him, then ran away. Timothy felt annoyed. Come here, Wallace, Timothy shouted. Come here. Wallace stopped, turned, and ran over. Maybe he needs me to sound forceful, like Mr. Parker does, he thought. Sit, Timothy said as loudly and as forcefully as he could. Wallace sat. Timothy laughed. He grabbed the leash. Now, he said loudly, we are going home. Wallace responded to Timothy's more demanding tone of voice. Maybe he just needed to be in charge, he thought. Wallace pulled on the leash to go faster, but Timothy said, No, boy, and he slowed down. The fence loomed in front of them. I will trust the Lord, thought Timothy. I will not be afraid. Carefully, he pulled up the fence to let the dog through. Then, holding as tightly as he could to the leash, he eased himself under the fence. Then, covered with dirt and grass, and slowing Wallace's bounding pace to a walk by his firm commands, Timothy walked leash in hand down the sidewalk all the way home. Mr. Parker's van was in the driveway. Hey, Timmy, my man, Mr. Parker's voice cracked the silence. I'm home early. How's old boy been treating you? Timothy smiled. He's been great, Mr. Parker. Didn't jump all over you and scare you to death, did he? Just a little. Mr. Parker's booming laugh filled the whole neighborhood. He took the leash out of Timothy's hand and dug a $10 bill out of his pocket with his other hand. Any idea what you're going to do with that money, son? He asked. Yes, sir, Timothy said, smiling. I'm going to take it to the fair. The fair? Mr. Parker shouted. Good idea. Going to ride the tingling terror, are you? Yes, sir, Timothy said. I'm going to ride it with my mom.